Hey, good morning everyone. This is Pastor Brent Strohecker and welcome to this episode of Closer to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all the things that you have done for us in recent days and we know that today and this week we're going to start a new chapter in the Gospel of Mark. We ask for your leadership and your guidance in the guidance of your Holy Spirit as we go through this scripture. Help us to take our time to learn from it and uh, hear the words that Jesus says in it so that we can uh, have a good comprehension of it and understand how it applies to our life in today's world. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, um, kind of doing this live here this morning, and I'm sorry for the shaky camera work. Uh, but um, got a lot of things to get accomplished today. So, uh, And I don't want to rush through this chapter of Mark. It's a very, very important chapter. Uh, there's a lot to it. So today what we're going to do is we're going to read through it, and then in the next uh, day or two we're going to go through and look at the different concepts that are brought about by it. So it's kind of a lengthy chapter, so I'm going to read it today, and then we'll review it in the next couple days. So here is Mark chapter 13. Jesus foretells the future. As Jesus was leaving the temple that day, one of his disciples said, Teacher, look at these, these tremendous buildings. Look at the massive stones in the walls. Jesus replied, These magnificent buildings will be so completely demolished that not one stone will be left on top of another. Later, Jesus sat on the slopes of, Mount, of the Mount of Olives, across the valley from the temple. J Peter, James, John, and Andrew came to him privately and asked him, When will all this take place? And will there be any sign ahead of time to show us when all this will be fulfilled? Jesus replied, Don't let anyone mislead you, because many will come in my name, claiming to be the Messiah. They will lead many astray. And wars will break out near and far, but don't panic. Yes, these things must come, but the end won't follow immediately. Nations and kingdoms will proclaim war against each other, and there will be earthquakes in many parts of the world and famines. But all this will only be the beginning of the horrors to come. But when these things begin to happen, watch out. You will be handed over to the courts and beaten in the synagogues. You will be accused before governors and kings of being my followers. This will be your opportunity to tell them about me. And the good news must be first preached to every nation. But when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry about what to say in your defense. Just say what God tells you to. Then it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death. Fathers will betray their own children, and children will rise against their parents and cause them to be killed. And everyone will hate you because you're of your allegiance to me. But those who endure to the end will be saved. The time will come when you will see the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing where it should not be. Reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person outside the house must not go back into the house to pack. A person in the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible it will be for pregnant women and for mothers nursing their babies in those days. And pray that your fight will not be, flight will not be in winter. For those days will be days of greater horror than, any, than at any time since God created the world. And it will never happen again. In fact, unless the Lord shortens that time of calamity, the entire human race will be destroyed. But for the sake of his chosen ones, he has shortened those days. And then, if anyone tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, don't pay atten any attention. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform miraculous signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. Watch out, I have warned you. At that time, after those horrible days end, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man arrive on the clouds with great power and glory. 
and he will send forth his angels to gather together his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now, learn a lesson from the fig tree. When it buds comes when its buds become tender and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that without being told that summer is near. Just so when you see the events I've described beginning to happen, you can be sure that his return is very near, right at the door. I assure you this generation will not pass from the scene until all these events have taken place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will remain forever. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when they will happen, stay alert and keep watch. The coming of the Son of Man can be compared with that of a man who left home to go on a trip. He gave each of his employees instructions about the work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. So keep sharp, so keep a sharp lookout, for you do not know when the homeowner will return, at evening, midnight, early dawn, or late daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. When I say to you, I, what I say to you, I say to everyone, watch for his return. So that is Mark chapter 13 in its entirety. And it's, of course, Jesus talking about future events. And there's so much there for us to discuss that I want to take time uh, and be patient with this so that we can break down each of those sections and learn what Jesus is trying to tell us and his disciples in this particular speech. Again, I'm sorry for the shaky camera work, but like I said, it's a busy day, so got a lot of stuff to get done today. Um, but what I would like to encourage each of you to do is uh, take a moment to read carefully Mark chapter 13 for yourself. And uh, tomorrow and possibly Wednesday, it all depends on how much we get through, uh, we're going to discuss the meaning of each of the sections and each of the things that Jesus said in this particular chapter because it's things that we really need to take heart of and apply to our daily living so that we too are re ready and prepared and alert and keeping watch for his return. So uh, I can't stress enough how important that's going to be for all of us. So uh, we need to make sure that we're ready for that day. And when that day comes, if, that's, if that day is today, we should be in a situation or in a place where we're not caught off guard, where, where we're not like, oh my gosh, today's the day. Am I good or am I? should I be worried? You know, and you shouldn't be in a position or a situation where you feel worried. You should be prepared and ready. And when you see him returning, the Bible says when he comes back, you should be reaching out to him with open arms, without a fear and without a second thought. And that's what it means to be alert and be prepared for his return. And we all need to get to that place. Uh, and I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, I see all the time on Facebook and other places and social media, how people are like, wow, 2020 is just a terrible, awful year. It needs to go into the history books. It needs to be put behind us and we need to move forward. We need to get back to the old normal, not the new normal, the old normal. Uh, I'm starting to see those t-shirts out there too. And I'm telling people, I love it whenever I see them wearing that, where they have a t-shirt on, on them that says old normal, but you know, we got to get back to the basics of the Bible is what I'm saying, okay? I don't want to make this into some sort of political speech or anything like that. I'm not doing that here. So don't say that I am. I know there are those of you out there watching and are waiting for that to happen, but it's not going to happen on this channel. This is the positive side of Facebook, okay? Just remember that. So with that being said, uh, again, I can't stress enough that, you know, our relationship with God is very critical, even at this stage in our lives, in this time that we live in. Because uh, as Jesus is saying to his disciples here, we need to be alert and awake and ready. So, because we don't know when he's going to come back. You know, that could be in the next five minutes here. And because we don't know, you know, we just got to be careful that we are prepared for that day. And if we're prepared for that day, then like the Bible says, we won't shrink back from him in fear. We will welcome him with open arms. And he's trying to tell his disciples and give them a heads up in this Mark chapter 13. Look, 
there are days coming they're going to be very difficult for all of you and when those days come it should be an indication and a sign to you that his return is near okay now i know there's people out there saying well are you going to be one of those pastors that is going to freak everybody out and say jesus is coming back and whatnot and no i'm not going to be one of those pastors okay I'm just saying what Jesus is saying. Jesus wants us to live our lives and live them well and live them loving God with everything we have and being compassionate to one another. That's the way that we're going to be prepared and ready for his return. We need to be in his word all the time and learning from his word so that we can live according to the way that he taught us to live. So if that day comes and if that day is today, then we don't need to shrink back from him in fear. We need to welcome him with open arms, okay? So now uh, I kind of feel like I'm starting to sound like a broken record. But that's basically what we're going to be looking at in the next couple days here. We're going to break this chapter down and look at the things that Jesus is saying and get a better understanding of them. Uh, because I know it, it doesn't take us that long to go through other sections of this Gospel of Mark as we've been going through in this series, Closer to God. But... Um, this chapter deserves some time uh, for us to be patient and patiently walk through it so that we can understand everything that Jesus is saying here because it does apply to us even in this day. Uh, don't let anybody fool you. I know there's people out there saying, well, the Bible's antiquated and some parts just don't apply to us anymore. And I don't think we should really worry about this, that, or the other thing. Or I think we should overlook this, that, or the other thing. Look, we're not the Bible's editors. We are the Lord's messengers. We are to share his word as it is. And remember, the Bible says he's the same today as he was yesterday as he will be tomorrow. So he doesn't change. And that means his word doesn't change. So it doesn't matter what time we're living in or what's going on or what the latest theology, or not theology, ideology is what I'm looking for. It doesn't matter what the latest ideology is or the latest thing is or latest trends are or the, or the latest acceptable practices and so on and so forth. You know, Jesus warned us about false doctrines that would come in the last days. And we need to be mindful of those false doctrines because there's plenty of them floating around out there. I was on a webinar last week um, where they were discussing uh, some of the sexual education uh, curriculum that's being taught to the students here in the United States and I was shocked I mean literally shocked shame on us I mean who out there uh, especially in the adult world and the education world thinks that any of that curriculum is uh, something that we should be teaching our kids as young as preschool and kindergarten too. All right. And, and why are we even exposing them to sex at that point, uh, in their lives? You know, uh, I just don't understand some of those things, but I'm telling you, it's, it's a crazy world. And, um, it, it is, uh, amazing to me that, um, things have changed as much as they have. And this is stuff that Jesus is talking about. You're going to see a lot of stuff that just doesn't make sense to you. And uh, I know that we're all experiencing that in today's world. So uh, even so, we need to be ready for his return. So I'm, I'm going to get down off my soapbox now because, you know, I, I, I'm, this is not... It's not my opinion. I'm, I'm influenced heavily by the Bible, as you guys all know. But I know there's a lot of people out there that like put words in my mouth as well. So, um, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, that's their doing, and that has nothing to do with me. So I ain't worried about it. But uh, what I am worried about is getting the Word of God out. That's what I'm worried about, okay? And I'm not saying I have the authority on the Word of God. I'm just saying that, look, we all need to come together as followers of Christ and get into His Word together so that we can be sure and make sure that we support one another in being uh, conscientious of His Word and conscientious of our actions and our words that they follow what He teaches us in the Bible. That's all I'm saying. And that's not... Um, me showing any type of authority. I'm giving all the authority and all the glory to God and the Lord Jesus Christ because they're the ones that hold that kind of authority and that's the kind of authority that I want to respect and I hope that many of you want to respect as well. So that's all I'm saying. You know, I'm not here to propagandize anybody or tell anybody what to do. I'm just here to share the word of the Lord so that together we can 
get a grasp on it and apply it to our daily living. So if today is that day when he returns, we're ready for him and we're not going to shrink back from him in fear. We're going to welcome him with open arms. So that's all I have to say for today. Uh, like I said, tomorrow uh, and maybe even the next day, it all depends. We're going to take our time and break down Mark chapter 13 and go through it step by step here to make sure that uh, we... Uh, listen to what Jesus says and get a comprehension and understanding of what he's trying to teach us and tell us in uh, these words that he has shared with his disciples so and how they apply to us today. So until then, until next time, remember, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you soon.